responsible for developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers worthy of special trust and confidence. The Class 03 Tech 24 class team includes class officers Lieutenant Lee and Lieutenant Brockerhoff. Class Recruit Division Commanders, Senior Chief Petty Officer Intel, and Chief Petty Officer Buell, and Class Drill Instructor, Gunnery Sergeant Cornell. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the National Anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony are as follows. At 1000, Commander Sheriff, Executive Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Rawson, Commander, Navy Region Southwest, will arrive. Guests and class will rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the National Anthem and the invocation. The Executive Officer and guest of honor will then address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the Executive Officer and guest of honor. The guests will rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. We give you our thanks for binding the restless waves within each of these newly trained officers so they could stand proud this day for becoming morally, mentally, and physically developed for the service of our fleet. As they prepare for their next evolution in their communities, remind them what it means to be a leader and to serve with a purpose. Let them embody humility and selflessness. Remind them to value every sailor and civilian they cross paths with each day. Impress upon them the initiative, integrity, accountability, and toughness needed to do the right thing, especially when it's difficult. Embolden them to have ownership of what they are called to do, even when they are called into harm's way. So as these officers look to the horizon, prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead, giving them the physical, mental, and spiritual readiness to meet each one with confidence. And as we continue to celebrate this moment, we ask for your spirit to reside with us and all those who stand to watch this day. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Rosen, Admiral and Commander Kilray, Captain McCarthy, Captain Atanasio, distinguished guests, veterans, service members, Officer Training Command Newport staff, family members, and friends, and most importantly, soon to be commissioned officers of OCS Class 03 TAC 24. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. I am excited to welcome our 85 newest graduates into one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers, that of a naval officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the remarkable individuals seated here today. It has enabled them to make sound choices, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without the guidance and support of family and friends. On behalf of the Navy and a grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, I am proud of each and every one of you. You all had many other options than volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You have completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You overcame obstacles. Nothing was handed to you but opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself to learn, to grow, and to lead. You seized that opportunity, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for this significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity, to lead what is truly our nation's most precious resource, sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world and around the clock. Know that you are going to be doing significant and meaningful work for your country. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country your 100% effort because nothing else will suffice. The Navy expects the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You are about to embark upon a great adventure, one in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you might have had. Regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is now my privilege this morning to introduce to you our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Brad Rosen, Commander, Navy Region Southwest. Admiral Rosen, a native of Randolph, New Jersey, graduated with honors from the United States Naval Academy in 1995. He received his master's degree in public administration in 2005 from Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government. As a designated career naval flight officer, he has served in DP-16, DP-30, DP-45, and later returned to the DP-16 War Eagles for his operational command tour. Admiral Rosen commanded Naval Station Norfolk, the largest base in the United States Navy. While in command, the Naval Station Norfolk team earned the Commander-in-Chief's Award for Installation Excellence. Admiral Rosen assumed command of Navy Region Southwest in May 2022. His leadership, is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy. We are privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Admiral Brad Rosen. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you so much. 
so much for that wonderful introduction. It's truly a privilege for me to be here today uh, as we celebrate, celebrate this truly momentous occasion. On behalf of the United States Navy, I offer my heartfelt congratulations to the 85 soon to be commissioned Naval officers. But before going any further, I would also like to recognize the parents, grandparents, families and friends of today's graduates. I thank you for laying life's foundation for these fine young Americans. Choosing a naval career is an admirably unselfish decision, the kind made by individuals raised in environments where responsibility, loyalty, and service matter. Service as a naval officer demands these qualities, and we have you, parents and families, to thank, to thank for showing them the way. As I worked to pull together my thoughts for today's speech, I began my preparation where all great research these day, begins these days. I went to the Google. I was determined to find a quote from someone much wiser than myself, a quote that I could use to kick off my speech. I was looking for a quote that would be especially profound and I was looking for a quote that would set the tone for the words of wisdom that I hope to impart to these newly minted ensigns. I scoured the internet long and hard, and eventually I found exactly what I was looking for. Although the author has been lost to history and no longer gets credit for developing this profound insight, the applicability of this quote for momentous events like today is truly immortal. The sage wisdom that I have taken to heart is as follows. The best way to make a great speech is to have a good beginning and a good ending and to have them close together. <laughs> and so, today's, today's OCS graduates, my gift to you will be to keep this speech, speech short and to the point. As you can tell from my uniform, where my wife and daughters still often refer to as my outfit, I am a career naval officer. I have spent over 30 years in uniform. I have had the honor and privilege of serving our great country while traveling the world. In my three decades of service, I've been lucky enough to have worked with wonderful people who have taught and spent time and to mentor me. And as I reflected on my time in the Navy, I came up with three decisions that I thought might be useful to OCS Class 3 Tech 24 as they graduate here today. And to these ensigns, I'm going to stick with my promise of being brief, so there are only going to be three things that I hope to impart to you. For I've been around long enough to know that you will certainly tune me out if I drone on for much longer than that. And so, here we go with three things that I've learned in my Navy career that I thought might be helpful to a group of, of young leaders as they finish officer's candidate school and are about to embark on their Navy careers. Number one, be curious. In my time in the Navy, I've been fortunate enough to be presented with unbelievable opportunities. I have commanded an aviation squadron and the largest Navy base in the world while meeting amazing people who have taught me more than I could possibly ever have taught them. I have gone to grad school on the Navy's dime and completed a fellowship in corporate America. I worked on the flight deck of one of the nation's 11 aircraft carriers, leading patriots and true heroes in what is unofficially known as the most dangerous job in the world. I was aware of these opportunities and was able to pursue them because I was always curious of what might be off the beaten path for a naval flight officer like myself. For the newest ensigns of the world's most powerful Navy, I recommend you use the next few years to be curious about what is out there. Try to seek out new people and be curious about their stories. Learn about their backgrounds and what makes them tick. Learn about their experiences. If you hear something of interest to you, be curious about how they made it happen. Throughout my career, I can trace nearly every opportunity that, that I sought, as well as every achievement that I have accomplished, to a random discussion that I had with someone along the way. Whenever I faced a major life or career decision, I was rarely going into it not blind. My curiosity always helped me to make informed decision, and my curiosity enriched my life in so many ways. My number two life lesson from a washed up naval flight officer is simply stated, be flexible. While some of you might have no idea what tomorrow will bring, I know that there are many of you who think you know exactly how your Navy career will play out, to include where you will live and how long you will serve. I have a secret for those of you who are thinking like this and believe that you have your entire future mapped out. It probably isn't going to work out exactly as you expect, and that is okay. 
When I headed off to flight school nearly 30 years ago, I thought I knew exactly what I was going to do with my life. I was going to complete my minimum commitment in the Navy and then go off to business school and earn my MBA. My wife and I never once discussed making the Navy a career while we were dating or even in our first few years of marriage. Then 9-11 happened and we realized that we wanted to continue serving our country in uniform. Our priorities have changed and our life has been that much richer because we were flexible and deviated from our best laid plans. For those of us in uniform, we have a saying that goes something like this. Whenever you make the best of plans, the Navy laughs at you. Being flexible will make your life less stressful and allow you the opportunity to see new things, meet new people, and broaden your horizons. I believe that being flexible is the key to having a rewarding life. Please don't mistake what I am saying to mean that you should not have goals that motivate you and get you out of bed in the morning. Instead, what I'm trying to say is, despite all of your brilliant planning and all of your best laid plans, you are going to face countless curveballs throughout your life. Embrace these curveballs and always work to be flexible. This brings me to my third and final recommendation for today's OCS graduates, which is simply bloom where you are planted. So I've already talked about being curious to learn about the amazing world that is out there, and I also talked about being flexible and pursuing opportunities that are not expected. However, despite all of your hard work, you are most certainly going to end up in places and situations that you did not expect. And when this happens, my words of advice are to simply make the best of it, and as the old saying goes, bloom where you are planted. Take advantage of all opportunities and be grateful for your present situation. You can still thrive even in circumstances that are not ideal. Try to appreciate the present and accept changes and setbacks. Look for opportunities where you can. Take risks, make connections, and work your hardest. Make the most of each day and bloom where you are planted. To the graduates of OCS Class 3 TAC 24, I know that I promised you all of three life lessons and I try to keep it short and sweet. Be curious, be flexible, and bloom where you are planted. But as you head out into the fleet, I do have one additional piece of advice, and this is actually a bit of a request. It is simply this. No matter where you end up in the coming years, no matter what you are doing, and no matter where you are living, I ask that you always remember where you are from. And when I say where you are from, I don't mean a city, a town, or even a school. When I ask you to remember where you are from, I'm talking about your parents, your family, your loved ones, your friends, your teachers, your coaches, and everyone else who has helped to shape your lives, including your OCS instructors. Your parents have poured their heart and souls into you, along with everyone else that I mentioned. You have already had great success in your lives, and you are destined to reach the highest of heights, as long as you always keep this in mind, and remember where you are from. To the ensigns of OCS Class 3 TAC 24, I wish you the heartiest of congratulations. As we celebrate your commissioning, today there are currently two carrier battle groups and one expeditionary strike group operating in the Mediterranean and Red Seas. During the holidays, all of these officers and sailors will be away from their families, forward deployed in harm's way, just like most of you will be in the coming years. All of you will eventually take your place in the fleet, and all of you represent the best our nation has to offer. In closing, I ask all of you to continue to care. Care about yourself, your family, your friends, your sailors, and your world. You are now part of the greatest Navy the world has ever known, and while we may not be perfect, our future is in your hands. You will make our nation even better, and I know that you will channel your enthusiasm and optimism into greatness. Remember to please be curious, be flexible, and bloom where you are planted. And as always, go Navy, beat on me. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention? Raise your right hand. I state your name. I, Sergeant George Jones, have 
been, have been being appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. I've been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. Do hereby accept such appointment. Do hereby accept such appointment. And do solemnly swear. And do solemnly swear. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office I'm about to enter. Of the office I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Ensign Bowser has been designated 
as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Balza is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Burns has been designated as a service worker officer and has been assigned to LSD-49 USS Harpers Ferry homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Coburn has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Navy Information Operations Command in Augusta, Georgia. Ensign Cook has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation School Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Cruz Cordero has been designated as a civil engineer corps officer and has been assigned to Naval Facility Southwest in Camp Pendleton, California. Ensign Cunningham has been designated as an information professional officer and has been assigned to Information Professional Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Davis has been designated as a Service Worker Officer, Nuclear, and has been assigned to LHA-6 USS America, homeported in Sasebo, Japan. Ensign Davis is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Barrett Day has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation School Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Brian Day has been designated as a Surface Worker Officer and has been assigned to DDG-82 USS Lassen, homeported in Mayport, Florida. Ensign Delaney has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Delaney is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Trapella has been designated as an Oceanography Officer and has been assigned to Strike Group Oceanography Team in San Diego, California. Ensign Everling has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Erickson has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Espadas has been designated as a service warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-44 USS Gunston Hall, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Evanhoe has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Evanhoe is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Farmer has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Farmer is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Ferris has been designated as a Supply Corps officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Forty has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to an intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Fudge has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation School Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bulky has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation School Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bulky is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Green has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Hamilton has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hanacone has been designated as a submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Hashimi has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hernandez has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCS-22 USS Kansas City, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Hikiyama has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCS-18 USS Charleston, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Ilana has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-82 USS Lassen, homeported in Mayport, Florida. Ensign Jark has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Jenkins has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Kruger has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Crush has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Lau has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Libido has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information 
professional basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Incident Lee has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to National Security Agency and Central Security Service in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Lenski has been designated as a Civil Engineer Corps Officer and has been assigned to Naval Rebel Construction Battalion 1 in Gulfport, Mississippi. Ensign Manning has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic Force in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Marengo has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Mark has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Martinez has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign McBride has been designated as a Submarine Officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign McFadden has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer Nuclear and has been assigned to DDG-69 USS Milius, homeported in Yakuska, Japan. Ensign McPeak has been designated as a Human Resources Officer and has been assigned to Navy Talent Acquisition Group, Jacksonville, Florida. Ensign Mendiola has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Moore has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Wing has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign O'Brien has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Odrago has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Professional Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Peace has been designated as an Aviation Maintenance Duty Officer and has been assigned to Helicopter Seas Combat Squadron 12 in Atsuka, Japan. Ensign Peterson has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Professional Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Pierce has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Bakari has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Pritchard has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Redding has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Reeves has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Ruiz has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LSD-42 USS Germantown, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Schindler has been designated as an Aviation Maintenance Duty Officer and has been assigned to Strike Fighter Squadron 102 in Iwakuni, Japan. Ensign Schindler is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Schneider has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Seidel has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Professional Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Seller has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic Force in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Sidman has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LSD-45 USS Comstock, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Smith has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Street has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Atterbury has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Tamayo has been designated as a Supply Corps Officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Two has been designated as a Surface Worker Officer, Engineering Duty Officer, and has been assigned to DDG-60 USS Paul Hamilton, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Walls has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Waring has been designated as a Submarine Officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. 
Enzo Weedell has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Aviation Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Isaiah Williams has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Professional Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Jack Williams has been designated as a Civil Engineer Corps Officer and has been assigned to Naval Global Construction Battalion 4 in Port Miami, California. Ensign Wimberly has been designated as a Cryptologic Warfare Officer and has been assigned to the National Security Agency and Central Security Service in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensign. Thank you for attending today's ceremony.